Hello, everybody. Welcome to only the second episode of ScreenFlow Live here on March 1st at 2.30 Pacific Time. Um, thanks for all of you who came last time. Thank you for everyone who's showing up this time. We've got a pretty cool show today. Um, it's going to be all about screen flow and support. As you can see there on the screen with Lucas Bischoffberger, that's me. But we also got a guest today, and his name is Abdul, and uh, he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. How you doing, Abdul? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you, Lucas. Um, yourself. So I think we're just going to jump right in. But uh, before we get to some of the meat of what we're doing, we're going to talk about a little bit about you. So I would love to hear who are you, what's your name, what's mm. your position here mm. at Telstream? It's a deep question. Um, I know, it's it's going to be tough <laughs> for you to answer, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I am Abdul, as you can see and hear. Um, I do work in support for ScreenFlow. So I'm sure I've worked with a lot of you. If you have open cases with me, I'm sorry, I'll get to those in a few, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, this is what I do on a daily basis, among many other things here at Telestream. Awesome. And, uh, and how long have you been working here? Four years. Wow, that's, a lo that's longer than, than I've been here, so. That's true. How, how's the day-to-day -day of, of working with ScreenFlow cases? Um, the day-to-day -day is interesting. Um, I get everything from the mundane to the interesting or complicated. Um, so I see, I see most workflows that come by, um, all of the, you know, really crazy stuff I have to deal with as well. So um, it can be exciting sometimes, and it can be routine as well. So nice. uh, that's the gamut. And what's your experience using ScreenFlow? Like, uh, not, just, not just being a support tech, but have you ever created anything with ScreenFlow? I've never created one thing with ScreenFlow. Um, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> use ScreenFlow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you've got to be lying right now. Uh, yes, I'm lying. <laughs> um, I, I use it quite a bit. Uh, we use it internally to create tutorial videos. So, yeah, I, we use it quite a bit. I use it quite a bit for reporting issues to engineering and QA. I use it for creating quick tutorials. If, if I really need to convey in like really plain form to someone what I'm explaining to them, then I will create a short video um, if time permits. Does that mean you – okay, you ready for this? Does that mean that you use ScreenFlow to help solve ScreenFlow support issues? I do. Isn't that that's, crazy? That's just like what life is about yeah, right yeah. there. Coming full circle. And then, of course, I use it for like my GoPro videos with my little chitlins. Nice. And putting some music to it and making it. I've that seen fun. that. Of yeah. them driving around on one of those little go-karts in your backyard. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. That's fun. Awesome. Um, I had a really good question. Actually, before I continue talking here, last month when we did this show, I thought that I was monitoring comments on Facebook. I had my, my Facebook up here, and I was looking at the comments, and then... When the show ended, I realized there were like 10 comments there, and I never saw a single one. So if you guys are out there, could you please comment now in Facebook so I can see if I actually have any comments here? Because right now I see no comments. And I want to make sure that it's actually working. So go ahead and throw some comments in there. Just to give you an idea of what we're planning on doing, hopefully we want to we answer questions for you guys because this is our resident all-star support for ScreenFlow. So if you've ever run into an issue that you want a question uh, answered about. <laughs> or that you want a question. Or that you want a question. If there's anything in ScreenFlow you want a question, we're here to answer to the best of our abilities. Hey, look at all those. Look at all those, those comments. Perfect. I can see them. Life is good. So... Um, yeah, go ahead and, and throw some questions in there if you guys want those answered. Other than that, we have just kind of a, uh, a general progression through the different stages of ScreenFlow and things that Abdul runs into with customers who want help from him. So, Abdul, I'm going to let you take it away just at the beginning. Just give us kind of an overview of some of the issues that you see, and then we'll dive into the more specific things. So, sure. What are some like top <coughs> issues that you see? So top issues I would see are anywhere from what just happened. So let's say you're a first time user, you install ScreenFlow, you start a recording and then nothing happens essentially. So that's like kind of the, the first thing that people are confused about is that ScreenFlow just disappears and gets out of the way so th it can actually record the screen. Um, sorry if that's redundant for people who are super 
basic but that is a thing i get a lot you know i bought screenflow i want to record my screen but i hit record and nothing happens well it's recording and then when you stop the recording that's when the magic happens i mean i can understand where people are coming from usually when you have a piece of software and sure. you, you have it do something you see it happen mm -hmm. but just the nature of screenflow when it's doing something it's out of the way because yeah. of what yeah. it's doing is letting you shine through screen flow. So. And that's why I'm polite when I answer those questions. <laughs> that's, that's always good. Gunter says hello from Sweden. Gunter, yes, sir. I got your uh, email the other day. So what's up, man? Gunter Abdul was stoked because he's like, Gunter's coming to the show. I can't wait to see him <laughs> on the show. Yes. Um, okay, sorry, continue. So besides um, the, yeah, so the first. Yeah, so sort of generic stuff like that. Um, as well as, so by default, when ScreenFlow opens up in the record or new recording tab, you'll see that the only thing selected is um, record desktop from. Yeah, so see people, if we can actually show people that yeah, in yeah. a second. So, sure. The configure recording? Yes. So by default, look how it shows up. And then people sometimes think that the, the audio will just be coming from the desktop. Hang where on a second. I just want to make sure that we've got this up on the screen here. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Sorry. So as you can see, record desktop from is checked by default, but record computer audio is not. So that's like those two things for new users is what I see, you know, often. And those are certainly easy to fix. Do you ever get questions about this slide here? Do people ever use this slide? People do use that to set timers. Um, one thing that's a little confusing about the set timer piece is that you'll add, say, you know, I want to record for 10 sec or 10 minutes, but then they hit record and they haven't actually hit set timer. <laughs> so that doesn't take and therefore they have this, you know, situation where their hard drive is full with 190 gigs of useless information. Yep. So, you know, little things like that. There's a slight learning curve for new users and then there's another learning curve for people that get into the intermediate and advanced stuff. Absolutely. Um, so that's uh, kind of the basic stuff. Now, you know, in in a, I guess in a overall sense, I'd say the most kind of issues I get are, you know, how how is the the playback in ScreenFlow? Maybe it's not so sound, if you will. I'm playing back an MP4 that I've added. It's a little jittery. It's a little stu stuttery. Um, that can occur sometimes when we have multiple versions of ScreenFlow installed, especially a Mac App Store build and a Telestream build. The Mac App Store stuff is is sandboxed, so that environment. What does sandbox mean? It just it's kind of um, limited, if you will, by what we can access. Okay, so it's kind of hidden somewhere. Yeah, there's certain things that Apple doesn't want to take place in their version um, okay. of ScreenFlow, where we don't really have that restriction so um there's you know i'm not actually sure that that everyone knows that um we do have two versions of ScreenFlow. we do but it's kind of confusing why that is so if you could tell us the, the differences between the versions well there's there's some export options that are available in the telestream build like the old quicktime lossless export that's something that we can turn on um but that's not out of the box in the, um, available in the Mac App Store version, um, and just a couple of other things that you know I don't really recall right now. So <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Super awesome. Um, that's so why you got, that's why you got all your resources <laughs> when you're working. Yes, support. You yes. Can, you can access I, all I that do also read the manual. So, but the idea there is that you can purchase directly from us ScreenFlow, yep. and you get a slightly more robust version. Right. But and you could also purchase from the Mac App Store and get a certain limitations, but there is also the benefit of having it in your apps on your Mac system, right? Right. There's there's pros and cons to that. The pros would be the use on five systems that you own under your Apple ID. One of the cons, though, is when we run into issues, we're kind of on this OS upgrade cycle of every year. So as we move on, so does Apple, and then we run into issues with previous versions of ScreenFlow. So if we build a patch for, say, version 5, like we did for Sierra, that patch isn't available on the App Store because we've already been in version 6 for a month, and we can't they can't host something that they don't sell. That's essentially the issue there. That's, so that yeah. becomes a little bit of a nuisance to get people, you know, upgraded to 6 or some kind of, you know, comp from our version on version 5. Yep. Sorry if that's convoluted. 
But well, it makes sense. Essentially, works. you can't stay up to date with an old version of the Mac App Store screen. Flow. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, you win some and you lose some. You, you have the access to it on all your Mac systems. Mm -hmm. But if there's a big patch, you might miss out on it. Right. So yeah. personally, I would choose to go with the non Mac App Store version just because then you can keep it up to date all the time. But, right. you know, there's 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 pros and cons. On both sides. Pros and cons. Exactly. It's dealer's choice. So if we were to break into, if we take ScreenFlow as a whole and mm -hmm. we break into kind of like the different sections of ScreenFlow, there's the recording, true. there's the editing, yes. and there's the exporting and, and uploading. Right. So let's start with whichever one you'd like and let's try and think about some issues that people might have when they're in those certain areas. Okay. So, so recording, there's there's not a lot of problems r with recording other than <coughs> understanding that our audio driver is designed to capture hardware from the Mac. So a lot of times it's just a simple config where the output settings for the Mac itself are set to some device that's connected. Um, we will throw an error when that occurs due to internal error. Um, the recording has stopped, something to that effect. I'm sure a lot of people have run into that. That will also occur when there's a Bluetooth device in the mix. We um, do not, we cannot capture Bluetooth devices at this time. That's something that we hope to do. Um, so those are kind of some of the initial errors. As I mentioned earlier, when we have multiple versions, sometimes we can um, mix folders from version 6 to version 5, and it's pulling from the wrong helper. So these things occur on occasion. Those can also cause some runtime errors upon recording. Those are usually fixed pretty quick with a reset that um, isn't really available on our knowledge base. You can certainly contact me if we need to reset preferences or remove some cache files. Cool. Um, and so that's the recording piece. What about recording and something that I've run into with maybe a, a new MacBook mm -hmm. or multiple monitors mm -hmm. is trying to line up my aspect ratios. Gotcha. So, uh, for example, one of the biggest things for me is internet video is generally accepted to be in 16 by 9. Yes. And 1920 by 1080 is a very, very common high definition uh, aspect ratio for 16 by 9 video on the internet. Indeed. But a lot of the new Macs, and actually I think all of the new MacBooks, the laptops, are natively 16 by 10. Correct. So do you ever run into people that are having issues with trying to reconcile the difference between what they want it to be and what they're actually recording in? All the time. All the time. And actually, Lucas does have a blog. Throw, th <laughs> throw a little plug in there for uh -huh. myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way to go. So Lucas does does have a little blog where he created a template that basically matches with the doc on the um, Mac OS. You'll notice most programs, Windows won't open past the doc anyway. So one way around that is in the partial screen recording up here. Um, right here, you can set that to 1920 by 1080 and just kind of be done with it. Set your window to record. Wow. This is obviously a 1920 by 1080 window. I didn't know you could do that. You didn't know you can do that. I had no to idea. Learn something new every day, every even day. here at, at old Lucas World. Um, <laughs> so that's that's kind of a quick way around that, especially if you're if you're on like a iMac 5K iMac. There's really that's overkill for like a web presentation in my in my mind. So those are always fun to hear about. Um, but you can, you know, this is a bad example because we're already at a, a 1080 screen. But you can sort of set your windows to be but recorded I guess if, in if that. If, is there what other what other uh, built-in sizes can we use? Um, 640 by 480. This is 4 by 3 though. Um, so if you click that, it'll show you something different, right? Correct. Yeah. There so there's go. 720, and then we could adjust this window if we wanted to, but um, that seems problematic. So I'm just gonna. I think people understand that concept. Yeah. Um. And then we have a bit of a discrepancy sometimes with um, the canvas crop button and yes. the document Here, settings. Let's, let's, let's do a quick, uh, quick recording of, oops, wrong button here, mm -hmm. of this. Is this the Dell? We've got two monitors, BMD, HDMI. Let's do that one. That's this one. I don't know. We're going to record something here. <laughs> let's see which monitor it is. 
Um, and we're just going to record it really fast. And now that that's done, stop the recording, create a new document. Okay, so now we have a quick uh, recording. And what we were talking about is this crop button right here, which I use all the time. When you open it up, 1920 by 1080, where does the issue arise here? Well, sometimes, let's close this right now. So sometimes we'll have material, especially if, we've, if we're bringing in media. Let's get a mouse pad over here. Okay, buddy. Much easier. Um, cheesier or easier? Um, Much cheesier, that's <laughs> what I said. Yes. <laughs> so sometimes if we bring in media that's not matching that size or slightly bigger, like let's say it's 1440 by 1050 or something weird, um, that can be you know adjusted and adapted primarily in, in the canvas crop button. But one thing to be aware of is the file document settings. So this is typically going to match your display size. So screen flow inherently records at your display settings. So, so whatever that is for your particular Mac, if you have um, an external monitor, that's always awesome. Um, but having those two discrepancies, so say this was slightly larger, um, you know, 1880 by, you know, 1440 or something weird like that. 1180, does that matter? Yeah, that does matter because, you know, everybody makes mistakes, Lucas. <laughs> Abdul, you make mistakes? Yeah. Unacceptable. So as you can see, this changes the, the, the canvas window, if you will, or workspace. Now, what we'll see in export, though, will always be this number. So you can see that was updated. Are you on version 7? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> 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 That's fun. Oh, but what happened right there was 1920 just... Yeah, it did, it did disappear. So anyway, th so what can happen? My point to this is uh, on occasion we'll do a call out or an action. And when, when the document settings don't match the canvas size, sometimes those actions will be cut in half, if you will. And the reason is, is they're living off in this workspace and there is a situation where we're going to be changing soon the discrepancy between the document settings and the canvas settings. So if those don't match, it will have an adverse effect on callouts and transitions, things of that nature. Okay. So the quick fix is just matching those document settings, resizing the images that may need resizing within the canvas window, and that usually clears up the problem like 99% of the time. So the biggest takeaway for me there is that I've always done all of my cropping and my canvas resizing using this, mm -hmm. but it's very important to also remember that up here in your document settings, this is where you really need to make the changes. Correct. If you're experiencing those issues. Okay, cool. Yes. Awesome. That was my question. Well, all right. That was great. Great answer. Thank you. By the way, guys, if you have any questions for Abdul, please throw them into the chat. I haven't seen a single question yet. Hmm. And the whole idea here of doing this live is so you guys can ask us questions and we can answer for you right away. Can't answer what I what I don't see. Exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point. Gunter, <laughs> <laughs> Gunter, you got some questions? I, Abdul thinks you might. Um, all right. So what about uh, uh, before we get any further? Anything else about the recording side of things on either the beginner or the advanced? Yeah, um, and this will probably fall in the beginner category. But one thing that is always the case is how do I record a keynote presentation or PowerPoint presentation um, people don't seem to understand that that's what ScreenFlow does um, sorry if that's you but um, yeah we, we basically record what's on your screen so if you just go into presentation mode and hit record we're gonna record that so people don't seem to get that correlation so they're trying to open their PowerPoint presentation in ScreenFlow yeah. through file open um, which will never work I see. Um, so that that's that's common. Another really common one for especially Keynote and PowerPoint is in the older versions, they default to a four by three presentation slide. Yeah. Oh, that's so it, it, you open up Keynote. It's, it's got two tabs at the top. One is standard and one is wide. Standard equals four by three. Wide equals 16 by nine. So, you know, the result is when you export, you have these large black frames on the left and right of your um, presentation. And 
people are like, oh, I feel kind of gypped. I'd like to have the full screen. And so I have to go and tell them, well, you're going to need to convert your PowerPoint or keynote presentation to a wide format, re-record. Mm -hmm. And that's how that occurs. But that's, that's a really common. That's called letterboxing. Letterboxing. Yes, yes. Classic, classic cinematic term, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. yes. Cool. Um, so that's sort of another recording situation that that comes across my table. Um, another one is, I guess, well, this will be sort of more for the advanced users. So people doing a lot of tutorials regarding audio programs, Logic, Pro Tools, things of that nature, where you're using an an audio interface device. Um, what is an audio interface uh, device? So that would be something that you're connecting a mic to. You're like connecting a, a mixer? Not a mixer. It's just a it's a through port, if you will, okay. for lack of a better term. So it allows you to hook up multiple mics, maybe a keyboard through MIDI, um, some XLR configuration. So people kind of that want to use a higher end setup. A little bit maybe like a USB dock, but for an audio device? Correct, yeah. And it will connect to the, your machine via USB or Thunderbolt. Okay. Um, so a lot of times I come across people that are confused why why their setup's not working. They see their device in record audio from, but then it kind of shows up in ScreenFlow a little chunky. And usually the cause is that they're routing their um, program to the audio interface device, where those programs need to be routed to the built-in input on the Mac so that we can capture it correctly. So it's a combination of effects, some of it on our side, some of it on the user side. Um, so and it's sometimes hard for me to follow exactly. So you've got these audio inter these audio sources, a microphone or something coming right. into your computer. So multiple channels is is the point, right? And That's and the audio is going instead of coming into ScreenFlow, it's going into their audio program. Correct, and then coming into ScreenFlow. Uh, so, so there's we, an extra step in, right. in between. So it's lost in translation, if you will. I see. Um, so those things, there's things like loopback programs that you can route all of your audio to the built-in hardware mm -hmm. on your system. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the basic recording stuff that I run cool. into quite a bit. All the, before you even press the button sometimes, all the stuff's got to be taken care of. Right. And that's, of course, you guys, in case you, in case you may have forgotten, the configure recording window. This is where you can set up all of your recording sources, whether you have an iOS device or your desktop that you're recording. We have two monitors set up here. We can record video from all sorts of things. We've got, do we have a webcam plugged in? Hey. Oh, hello. Hey. <laughs> um, and then we can also get our audio from a couple different sources and then record our computer audio as well if we want to do something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different options here. And then don't forget, you can also, without recording, just open up a blank document with your screen dimensions already set up here. 1080p HD, I highly recommend just using this right off the bat mm -hmm. if you're doing something else. Um, do you have people that are that are asking questions about the different types of pre-built screen dimensions? Occasionally I get people that want to use the built-in iOS stuff, but that's super rare. Um, everybody's aware that they can actually crop the canvas, so that's, you know, it saves a little bit of time, but it's not an absolute um, necessity in my opinion. Now, um, to go back to what you said earlier, 1080 is a good option because if you need 720, it's easier to scale down than it is to scale up. You can't scale up in ScreenFlow. So, yeah. um, and that's not good for, for your project either, uh, upscaling. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's And then of course your, your recent documents, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Indeed. All right. Indeed. So let's move on to the editing area. Mm -hmm. And some issues that people might run into when they're editing their ScreenFlow projects. This is after you've already recorded something or you're bringing in media from your media library here over here in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you see people running into? Well, I see um, just orientation kind of right off the bat. So from the low end to the high end, just where things are in ScreenFlow. That's kind of any program that you're starting to use. You kind of got to get a lay of the land. Um, there's shortcuts. Uh, you know, certainly there's shortcuts involved in ScreenFlow, and people get accustomed to those, and those save time. Um, just understanding the difference between file open and media library. So file open is obviously to open a ScreenFlow document, dot .ScreenFlow, 
and that's the only thing that menu will open. As you can see here, open and reset. These are all different screen flow documents that we've created and saved in the past. Correct. And then there's people that are going to supplement their projects with some media that's pre-recorded or images or documents, et cetera, et cetera, that they want to pull in. And they also think maybe they can get that through file open where that's actually going to happen in the media library, which is this fun little icon on the far right, upper right hand fun. corner. Very, I'm sure very I've fun. said that to some of you in the in the past <laughs> um, and then the handy dandy add media button which brings up finder and allows you to pull in you know something like that well I don't know what that is so <laughs> we'll delete that <laughs> but um, and then you can also drag and drop stuff from finder to the media library bin here um, we can access iTunes Looks like we don't have like any music <laughs> on our iTunes we could account if, on this if, year. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's where you would do that. Um, Garage Band if you're making beats. Right, which that's a whole other conversation. But then to return back to the actual media library, you need to select media and documents. So some people get lost and they can't come back from like photos or iTunes. Yeah. And so the, the conclusion there is click on that. Boom, that's back to square one. And that's your media library. So that's how we um, bring in additional media. Say you have another, you want to add a little more audio or mm -hmm. video to your, your recording. You can do that right here just quickly with add recording. It'll default to your pre-configured state, which is record desktop from I gotta get audio. I gotta get better to, to do because what I do when I make a lot of these tutorials, I make a ton of tutorial videos mm -hmm. using ScreenFlow and Sometimes I'll record something and realize, wow, that was a really good first half, but I need to redo the second half sure, of it. Sure. And I'll save this and close it and then open up a brand new ScreenFlow document and then I'll copy and paste it. And I go through this crazy workaround for mm -hmm. no good reason mm -hmm. when all I can do is just press add recording and just sure. it comes right into my media library. Yeah. Right. Like that so seems like a much That better brings idea. up the config window. This brings up that same window. Mm -hmm. And so does file new. So those are three ways to approach this same screen. Okay. Um, now, another kind of confusion for some, not all, but some, is they make a new recording. So here's everything that's listed. Like, oops, never mind, I forgot to select something. Can't really cancel that. But recording is in progress. We'll stop this recording. You can create a new document or add to this current document. That's the one that I use. Right. And we do that. And it's somewhere in there. You're in Untitled 2. You added it to Untitled 1. Ah, that's ooh, good point. I'm glad that happened. Yeah. So if you have multiple projects open, it will default to the number one project that was open. So keep that in mind. Um, so if we go to that project, there there's is. our recording. And another confusion there is a lot of people feel like that should be in the timeline as well. That merely gets added to the media library and needs to be added manually to the timeline okay. so boom there it is yada 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 so we can delete that that was just for educational purposes i don't know what's going on there just so asking if you really wanted to delete yeah. that. <coughs> i mean you have used ScreenFlow before no <laughs> what, is, what is ScreenFlow? <laughs> um i just didn't want to you know i don't know what projects are open and what's what so oh i don't no, want to i don't want to this is all just demo stuff so go ahead and tear it to pieces if you want gotcha so I guess in, in that conversation, since we're over in the properties pane, this is another sort of scenario where people get tripped up first time users typically. Um, hey, my video actions are grayed out. Yeah, I just I bought this. Anything. I was What's using it on? in demo. It worked fine in demo mode, but I bought a license and now it doesn't work. Um, so typically you, you need to select something that applies to um, a property or action that you're trying to use because there's no audio in this if we click the audio tab grayed out grayed out always going to be grayed out mm -hmm. there's no way to get that until you bring in an audio source gotcha and then this will uh, what do you light say? up like toggle on or something like that yeah it will activate available. maybe you could say there's many many things you could you could say to that <laughs> um so there's the video um, portion or properties in the properties pane so this is where you can add like a, a zoom effect for the overall canvas um, not just an isolated area of the project 
Um, you can rotate the can your image, yada, yada, yada. Um, everybody, I'm sure you can crop here if we bring these down. Zoom, zoom. Um, you can add a little reflection fun and things of that nature. Do you, do you recommend... So, so me personally, mm -hmm. I never use the cropping controls here. Right. Because I always just crop, not by going like that, but then clicking. Control. There we go. Control. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys can see here, but this little button. Handlebar. Handlebar. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. You got all the terminology down. It goes from a circle to a rectangle. And now I can crop. And you can see, look at, look at over here on the right. You can see the values be automatically adjusted. Indeed. And one thing that, that, that took me a while to really understand is if you watch up here in the position, as I'm c cropping this, why is the position changing? That makes no sense to me. And it took me a while to figure it out. But the idea here is that this is the center point of my media. And when I crop it, that center point is changing. And we use the position, the X and Y axis position, is all based on the center point of your media. So as you crop it, the center point is changing and that's why you see the position change here. Right. And each piece of media or clip will have a different center point. That's true. Or its own unique center point. Yeah, so that's that's something that, that me personally, it took me a while to really pick up on, but now I understand. And the reason why that that's tough for me, uh, maybe I can explain this to you. So if I take this and just make it back to its original size, oops, let's do 100% and then the position is going to be zero. Who am I going to sneeze? <coughs> Bless you, sir. Sorry if that blew out your ears, guys. <laughs> um, so what I will do is w let's say this is a 10-minute video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I, when I'm recording myself, there will be moments where, that I don't like. So I can come here and I'll be like, you know what? At the beginning, I want it to be this size. And then I'll take out this little chunk here because that was no good and bring it back. And then I'll take out this chunk here. And what I've done now is I've turned one piece of media effectively into three pieces of media. Right. And maybe in this one, I want it cropped. But in this, and then I want it to be taking up the full size but in this one I don't want it to be cropped but I want the values to be the same as this clip because I want it to be in the same area but if you look at this and I and I copy this I want 100 percent negative 226 is my position if I go and give this the same thing uh, negative, negative 226. 226 you can see that these two sections are not perfectly lined up and that's because I cropped one of them and now the position values are different because the size of each element is different and that was an issue that I ran into quite often and now what I've realized is that if you have something like that where you have a long project and there are certain bits you want to cut out don't cut them out until the very end do that at the end and align all of your media together then cut it out that way you don't have to go through and try and match each section to each other yeah. hopefully that made sense right that actually brings up a good point so waiting to apply filters is also a good thing to hold off on while editing what we're doing right now is we're rendering and re-rendering each clip as every edit happens so we have to reference each clip and re-render that. So if we're having a bunch of filters on a, you know, clips that are in the first 10 minutes of your project and now you're working on the second 10 minutes, we're, s we're also having to reapply all those filters and adjust the waveform and things of that nature. That can cause some issues in playback as well, some stuttering issues, maybe the, the beach ball of joy and um, things of that nature. So. Kind of, you know, it is it is a good idea to just handle the crude editing pieces first and then go back and apply filters, color correction, things of that nature to get it just right. And that also helps alleviate missing spots along the way. Now you're focused on adding those filters. Let me get all of the clips that are video clips. I'm going to apply filters to those. 
um, and so on and so forth. Just kind of workflow suggestions, how to, how to maximize your efficiency when editing. You don't want to pile everything on at the very beginning and then slowly take it all out because then suddenly you have more things like, you know, I guess you could say, is it harder to rip one piece of paper or 50 at one time? Right. You know, so start with ripping just one and then at the end, pile them all on top of each other. Might be a little bit easier to do. Analogies. Analogies. That's where it's at. It really <laughs> is. Um, one thing I noticed uh, after four years of working in screen slow support, you seem to have a uh, a newly developed way of talking about things, like the spinning beach ball of joy. Yes. Because to me, that's the spinning beach ball of death. Right, but it's all perspective. I mean, there it is, you know, right I'm there. I'm not gonna badmouth Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you guys know what we're talking about. By the right. way, the spinning beach ball for for Abdul, it's joy. You gotta stay positive sometimes when you're right. running into issues. If you're at a concert and you're having fun, there's a beach ball in the air, so it can be <laughs> joy. It's all perspective. It's a joyous thing. I like it. Right. Um, yeah. So those are kind of. I mean. I guess we could talk about a few things here. Um, audio wise, since we don't have any audio, this is a bit goofy, but well, let's record some audio real fast. Okay, Look let's do you. that. How do you this like that? Shazam. Let's let's go like this. Oh, add recording. New. Learn something new every day. How do you like that? Let's record audio from our HD Pro webcam. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, hello. So we're gonna do some quick audio recording here, and we're gonna say, "Hey, camera." Hi, camera. All right, that should be that should be good enough. Sufficient. Stop that recording, and we want to add it to Untitled Two. Mm -hmm. There we go. And let's just bring our audio source in because that's really all we need. There we go. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. So, Abdul, continue. Okay, so here we can adjust the volume. Obviously, um, one thing to note. I get a lot of folks using like USB connected devices, especially the Blue Yeti. Um, that that one and the Logitech C920, just from my experience, tend to be the most problematic devices in terms of screen flow. Sync issues, volume levels, um, kind of, you know, volume levels too low, I should say. So the waveform shows up and it is just minuscule. It's hard to see. Um, to quickly remedy that particular issue, um, rather than fidgeting with a bunch of settings, you can just come in here, hit the smooth volume levels, and Ooh. bam! It what just is, kind what of did that say up there? so it it the window it, that popped it said really processing ah oh, okay right so that's just sort of a um, in process window that popped up or dialogue um, that will bring your waveform up into more of a normalized state and a state that you can better access the waveform in terms of if you're trying to, you know, edit based on the audio point. Um, again, that's a heavy resource to manage during, if you if you plan on making a hundred cuts, um, maybe it's better to, you know, get the, get the audio straight beforehand. But if you're just doing a couple things that don't really affect the project overall audio wise, then smooth all smooth volume levels is awesome. We also have removed background noise. Careful on the remove background noise, by the way. If you if you boost that up to a hundred percent, it might distort your actual audio. Uh, it depends on what kind of audio source you have. But if right. it's if it's you talking into a microphone and you do one hundred percent background noise removal, it's going to distort your audio. I w I wouldn't go higher than eighty percent generally, mm -hmm. um, but just always be wary of of the final output. Right, and it and it can cause some actual clicking and popping. Um, if those things occur, just remove it and um, maybe export your audio only. So we could go file export um, and just do like a lossless audio. Or if you want to keep the web high mode rolling, just customize it and uncheck the video so that all we're exporting is the audio. Yep. Um, and that can be brought into like iMovie, which is pretty standard, and you can use their remove background noise. If ours isn't working for you, there are a few scenarios where that, that comes into play. Um, so just kind of workarounds to save you some time and, and frustration. Um, so that's, that's always awesome. Video motion, this will kind of add bounce effects. So we have maybe a lackluster set of animations for like text and things of that nature. So we can we can add a few bounce effects here. Um, that's a bit long to kind of produce. So I'll, I'll steer away from that. So screen recording, 
what differentiates ScreenFlow from a lot of other just basic screen recording apps is that we do separate the mouse, that we can affect the mouse independently um, from the video, meaning it's not burned into the video. Therefore, we can, you know, add click effects and replace the image altogether if we yep. wanted to put Lucas's smiling face when his, you know, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for Thanks everybody, but uh, yeah, that's a possibility. We can add, you know, a dark circle, a light circle. That's backwards, but a light circle, a dark circle. And I think we one thing to remember, sorry to interrupt, is mm -hmm. once you've taken the mouse pointer off, you got to remember that you did that. Otherwise, you're going to be like, what happened? Right. I, I know these things sound simple, but I use ScreenFlow all the time, and I've done this before. I, I turned off the mouse pointer and then went, you know, two minutes later in my video, and I was like, what happened? Why didn't it record? The mouse pointer. How right. am I going to show people what I'm doing here? I realized because I toggled it off and I forgot right. to turn it back on. Another one on that, on this particular situation here, is the ability to zoom up on the mouse. If you are in the, <coughs> let's bring the uh, the scrubber, scrubber back. Yeah, right. Um, there it is. Zoom, zoom, yeah. zoom. Let me zoom, let me zoom. let me adjust this real fast so we can see a little bit better. Sorry, Abdul, to take the take the control out of your hand no here. problem there we go so now you can see as we as we change the pointer zoom you can see the little arrow in the top mm. and then um we can also change how it looks right but my point to this is if you lose this ability to zoom in to change any effects with the mouse in some cases if you go into the apple um, accessibility options display subset so there's going to be a slider system preferences yep. and then this bloop, bloop, bloop. accessibility and display here if this cursor size is set to large or anything but normal i should say that can have an adverse effect where we lose sort of sight of the mouse while mm -hmm. we're recording it changes the attributes of the mouse from an os perspective and so that can cause some issues in ScreenFlow. doesn't happen all the time but that's a kind of something that you can check on your end if that if you're experiencing that make sure that's at normal and then you can obviously adjust that up if so you're on a retina screen with a huge you know display then the mouse just appears small by default mm -hmm. so a lot of people will adjust that here but it causes some issues so just keep that in mind especially for you 5k users out there Whew. um yeah so that's kind of the pointer we can show keyboard shortcuts if we're doing um a program where we're typing that will actually go on the screen and, and show you what what values or keys you're hitting on the keyboard um Maybe for deaf users, that's helpful. Um, you know, there's other scenarios where that's certainly helpful. Awesome. Um, before you continue, yes, I just want to say, everyone, we 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 generally slot out about an hour. We don't generally go more than an hour, which means we got about 15 minutes left in the show. And I want to make sure that we get some fun stories from Abdul because he's been doing this for a long time. You're bound to have run into some funny instances where maybe miscommunications or something like that. So I'm going to put you on the spot here in a second. Hmm. But before we get to that, please send us any questions that you might have. I think um, we've talked about a lot of the things that you experience as a beginner and that you might experience as someone who has a little bit more time with ScreenFlow under their belt. I mean, I, I use it all the time and I still run into some technical issues that I don't quite understand. Um, so... As I ask Abdul to share some funny story, you got some stories, by the way. I don't know if they're appropriate. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> I've had some woo some interesting calls for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Funny stories. I've just had fun experiences. Like my whole thing is is let's make support fun. You're already aggravated by the time you call me, so I'd prefer to relieve some of that aggravation if I possibly can. You know, if somebody comes off as super professional, I'm going to keep it on that level. But if somebody, if I detect any amount of looseness, I'm going to run with that and keep it fun. Because why not be able to laugh about everyday life? I'm here every day and, or five days a week, and I, I want to have fun. So if you want to have fun and you're into that and we can get to a resolution at the same time, then all the better for me. Um, 
you know, so I have got a few customers out there that that are frequent flyers, you know, up in the 60 case category. Wow. Bam. That's wow. a lot of issues. That is, um, yeah. And, and you know, you develop a rapport with these people, and so you, you get on a first-name basis, and they just put Abdul in the subject line when they submit cases anymore. <laughs> so, um, just let me talk to my favorite guy, Abdul. Yeah, yeah. He'll sort me let's, out. Let's skip all that. Just get me to the guy. Um, now, I can't solve every issue. Certainly, we have a, a team of individuals behind me that, that help me resolve issues. That's the QA staff, the engineering staff. Um, they're awesome and we're a busy group here so we don't we don't get to everything all the time right away but we're certainly we care and we're on it um is it is it appropriate to ask you how many cases you go through a day or do we want to maybe not tell people it that? depends man it depends it can be 10 it can be 60 it yeah. just all depends especially around release time we get a lot of upgrade issues um you know finding licenses goofy stuff like that yeah um and yeah, sometimes there's just heavy days where like I just can't get to everything because I also <laughs> help out in a lot of other departments. Yeah. Um, so you we're know, all we're all jacks of all trades. Indeed, I think that's indeed. the way to say it, the plural of that. I don't but know yeah. if that's correct. I wouldn't quote Lucas. You on you that. understand where I'm going? There's with that thing. yeah. We, we all we all do a little bit of everything around <laughs> here, so we gotta we gotta have our finger in every pot, which indeed. is fun. Indeed. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess it, it could get a little – you don't want to call people out when you're talking about fun stories that have happened. Yeah, past, yeah, so. yeah. I, I, like I said, it, it, it's more about fun individuals, people that I like. I see a case and like, oh, I'm excited to help them because they're enthusiastic about screen flow. Like that's, that's really where I, I have fun or, or it's rewarding when people really – you know, it's benefiting their business, if you will, or their, their lifestyle – and and they enjoy ScreenFlow and they're appreciative of the non bloated nature of ScreenFlow because there's a lot of programs out there, but God, there's just so many buttons and drop well, downs. That's, that's one of the things that I like about ScreenFlow is that here in the, in uh, I'm not sure if you can see it right now, but if we go back to the UI, you've got the crop button which we talked about, mm -hmm. the rewind, play, and fast forward button. That's actually yeah yeah that goes to the front or back of your project but Ex like lightning speed fast forward <laughs> okay extremely and fast forward yeah and then we also have one two three four five six seven eight nine, nine. we got nine tabs up here which are associated with one through nine on your keyboard no way well there's a the, you need you a gotta, modifier you gotta key. modify yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so if you go to view it's just a zoom, zoom, zoom. switch to inspector so uh, 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 command one, yeah, command yeah. two. OK, yeah. hot keys, hot keys. But the point of that is that you have nine buttons up here and four buttons down here. And in reality, that's screen flow. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, when you open up these tabs, you have different buttons within sure. them. But the idea is that everything is really sleek and straightforward. So I guess to some extent that helps you on a support side. I mean, I can't imagine some of these more complicated editing programs, the kind of questions they get from people. Right. Like, dude, I don't even know how to turn it on kind of thing. Right. And once I do, there's a billion options. So ScreenFlow right. is pretty, pretty streamlined. Sure. And that's what makes it interesting for people because they're coming from like an iMovie or another program that I won't mention. And they're just, you know, there's too much stuff going on or overkill or fluff, if you will, um, that can have an adverse effect on quality as well. Um, one thing I did want to touch on before we yeah, get go uh, get away from things is is kind of the export options. So oh, in, in general, um, one thing that's good to do, so if you're, there's no real finite answer for what settings are best for quality meets size. That's really a, just a moving target, and it's all depending on your source material, frames per second, things of that nature, the codex underneath those containers. Yeah, it's an MOV, it's an MP4, but there's lots of flavors. Um, s and on that topic, and some MP4s have an AC3 codex, so when you have an MP MP4 that you've added and there's no video, it's because it's Dolby. And we're not paying royalties for the Dolby audio and that was flow. that was a pretty convoluted thing that he just said. If you guys have questions about that kind of stuff, bam, submit, submit a, support a support case to, to Abdul. We won't get into that right now. But um, one thing I did want to mention: what's what's quick to kind of, you know, I have a two-hour video. You want me to export a thousand times to find my right fit for for quality? Well, 
you can use the I and O key that's in and out which you'll see up here in the mark menu mark in and out points in the mark the Tampa menu right right and so you can just say okay well let me get a couple seconds of that and let me go to file export and let's export that selected range so then we can just export in a few seconds and have a, a better picture of what our video is going to look like on I export. do that all the time by all the way the that is a, and then I, I sometimes will also um, even scale by 50% just to get the export to be super fast because right. I don't always need to look at the final quality maybe I'm checking the audio sync just to make sure that in the export it looks the same as it mm -hmm. does in here this is just a really quick way to do some uh, quality assurance as you're going through and editing your video make sure that that transition looks exactly how you thought it was gonna right. look and just while we're here if you guys are continued users of ScreenFlow, this will be getting an overhaul that this will default to a hundred percent because there's no real reason why you know, if I want 1080, I want 1080. Yeah. I shouldn't, you know, export without making any settings. And then what, what just happened? Um, so kind of those are the first things to do is, is get that to your 1080 position. Um, but customizing can be key as well. So this 1200 um, kilobits per second is really designed for, <laughs> is really it's designed. my personal feelings <laughs> on 1200. Yes, yes. We <laughs> have, uh, that's the dislike button. Yep. Um, this is basically set up for PowerPoint slides, so so frames that are duplicated a bunch um, is is really where that sweet spot is for that. That's going to be changing as well. Um, you'll be there's some some nice things coming in seven. I can't really discuss, um, but but those are part of them. Kind of a more intuitive export. Yeah, just option. to give you an idea about the data rate, I don't ever export videos under eight thousand. Uh, kilobits per second. Right. Kilobits. Kilobits. Kilobits per second. Yeah. I, I will always boost this up to 8,000. It just allows you to put more information into your video, so you're going to get crisper lines, and you're going to get better focus, mm -hmm. and you're going to get less less blurriness and fuzziness in right. your video. It just there's going to be a bigger size, and it's going to take longer to export, but it's going to look a lot better. Right. It's less compressed. We're keeping more of the raw data. Um, for example, YouTube um, 1080 at 30 frames per second would suggest 10,000 kilobits per second. If it's 60 frames per second, they're going to suggest 12,000 kilobits per second. Um, there's no real limit to this screen, which is sort of a flaw, but yeah, don't put in 30,000 because that's not going to help you. Um, keep yeah, if, it you, if, you, if you stay between 8 and 12, yeah, I yeah. think, 8 and 12,000, that is, you should be just fine. Right, and if you do change it to anything above 8,000, it's probably a good idea to choose automatic or high. So that's just an algorithm that corresponds to the um, data rate. And so if those are mismatching, you can have some anomalies there. Um, you can go up to 60 here. A lot of people don't catch this, but if you scroll up, there's 60 on export. Now we, we can't get that on import. We do an automatic. But... Um, in addition, there's some people that want 24 frames per second, which is more of like a movie standard. Um, and they don't see it here, so they get turned off and aggravated, and why can't I have that? And they submit a feature request. Well, you can actually just type in any value that you want, and there you go. There you go. Um, so those are kind of some of the, the quick you know, fixes, especially when you first open ScreenFlow. It looks great in ScreenFlow. You export it, and it looks horrible. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be this data rate. Yeah. So go ahead and change that. Use your in and out points to get a better picture of, of how it's affecting your project specifically. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say one last thing about that, and that is when you're in the ex oh, that was batch yeah, export. Batch. Whole different story. That batch export, export selected range, you can manage them, and what you can do is create a new one. You can say. Let's just copy web high because I know it wants to be really close to that. And I can say my special preset. I forgot the space. So I say, okay. And then let's go back in here and manage. Where'd it go? Did copy I not save it? Web high. You have to actually export. So that's another fun. Thank you for doing that. You actually have to export one time ah. and that will show up. The copy next time of you web go high. Into. Okay. Right. So, but now I have copy of web high. So now you can do that 
and then make settings default. So now every time you come in here, well, let's actually change this to 100% and then make my settings default. So now it'll come in and my custom preset for export will be there. It'll be scaled to 100% and I'll have that really good quality video coming out of ScreenFlow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think we could stop there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I didn't cover everything that you were probably here to learn about, but... Um, that's why we encourage you to ask questions. Right, right. If I don't know, I don't know. I haven't gotten any questions from you guys yet. Hello, Eric Russell from Arizona, by the way. Not a question, but totally legitimate. Hello, Eric. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think we're going to call it here. We'll wait about a minute for you guys to add more questions, and we'll answer those if you have any questions. Otherwise, I just want to thank you guys for coming to mm -hmm. our... Only our second episode of ScreenFlow Live. My first. Uh, Duel's first. Uh, and he won't be here every every month, but if you guys have some questions for him, maybe he can make some cameos in the future. Right, right. Um, and then always remember to let us know what you want to see in these. We're thinking, you know, interviews with people here at Telestream, interviews outside of Telestream, um, basic ScreenFlow use, advanced ScreenFlow use, doing something very specific in ScreenFlow. There's a lot of different ideas that we can do for the ScreenFlow live show. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll sing you songs one day. Actually, I probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, we don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Um, but, uh, oh, I'm going to sneeze again. I don't know. I think okay. I'm allergic so, to yeah. this room. <laughs> if you don't know how to contact support, it's oh. uh, telestream.net is our website. And um, let's just bust that open let's real just fast. Get there, telestream.net. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, well, there's mm -hmm. Telestream support for that, but let's just go original telestream.net. Right. You click on the support tab in the middle of the top of the page. You choose ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow. And you contact support. So let's hit that contact support button. And oh man, if there's just one more button to hit. So we have a list of sort of, you know, typical stuff that, that we see. Um, how to technical help. There's some drop downs. There's some topics, yada, yada, yada. If none of these um, are what you're after, then submit the support inquiry. It is just a mile long little page to get some information and details about your issue. That goes into a queue and that gets reassigned and I'm typically handling those. So cool. Yeah. Uh, you can also contact us on Twitter at ScreenFlow or here on Facebook as well. Um, if it's complex, probably submit a sport ticket though. Twitter um, is hard to, you know, get details in in a in a real manner. Absolutely. It's 140 characters. Absolutely. Not my favorite. Eric Russell has used ScreenFlow since its original release. Woo, Vara! That's incredible. That's incredible, Eric. Thank you, sir. And he likes the improvements that we've made over the years. Stay Thank tuned. You. Oh, one thing I'd like to mention, if anybody's used to like running into saving errors, so the Mac OS does autosave by default to the sort of detriment of some ScreenFlow users. Um, we will be turning that off in the next version by default. We'll have a way to turn autosave on, but it causes way more problems than it solves. Um, so we will be making that preference off and the ability to turn it on will be there. So just a heads up, if you're typically used to your project being auto-saved after 30 seconds, then that will no longer be happening by default. Cool. All right, Abdul. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, and uh, we're going to sign off now, but be sure to see us here on April 1st. Mm. No, wrong. The first Wednesday of April, which would be... April 5th, excuse me. Uh, we will be here April 5th with another ScreenFlow Live. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Hope you had a great time, and we will see you guys all very soon. Have a wonderful afternoon. Peace. See you later.